Hello and welcome to the Masks of Zorro tutorial where we will learn how to animate like Zorro, to slash like Zorro, and to use masks and wear masks like Zorro. You'll notice that when you download the file, the zip off of Learning Suite, not only will you get source files, but you will also get an After Effects file, which is called Masks of Zorro Student 2. So what we're going to do here is start off with, well, well you know what we're going to do, is we're going to start off with an example movie, aren't we? Let's take a look at this very tiny movie that I should probably enlarge one of these days. It's very low res. There's Antonio Banderas. There's Errol Flynn, or one of those old actors. And that's it. So we've got some very soft wipes, beginning with this soft horizontal wipe. And then we've got Zorro tiptoeing in. And we've got some slash, we've got a round transition right here. We've got some slashing of the curtains, and we've got some masking, and some layer splitting, and then some type. Okay, I'm going to leave that open. Let's start off with this initial transition, which is a downward, very soft wipe from black to the house. Let's see, let's turn on black fade. And underneath black fade, we don't want curtains or Zorro. We actually want this house. You know what, it looks like we should probably work from bottom up here, so let's use this bottom black fade. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a mask. Now the easiest way to add a mask to a layer without actually drawing with any of these tools up here is to go to Command Shift N. Let's see, that would be layer new... No, mask, new mask, shift command N. Shift command N puts a rectangular mask around the bounds of your layer. Now, down here in our timeline, I can hit M to reveal mask one and all of its properties. Let me flip up the twirly and flip it back down to reveal all four of the properties of my mask. Okay, so if, if this mask is gonna pull down, that's gonna look something like this. I just double clicked on the edge of the mask to get this envelope here, the bounding box. And so essentially we're going to do this. However, it looks a lot different on the example, so we do have a little bit of work to do. The first thing we need to do is soften our mask. Right now it's completely a smooth vector hard mask. So I happen to know uh, that we need to soften the mask a lot with mask feather. We could try like 150 pixels of softness and see what that looks like. You can already see it's cutting into our edges here. That's pretty soft. Do you think we should go with more? Do you think we should go with like 200? I think we might need to. So how do we solve this problem of Maria? No, how do we solve this problem of the mask revealing what's underneath it? Well, we're probably going to have to enlarge it. Let's scale down using the less than or the comma key in our comp window. And I'm going to enlarge the mask by dragging to the bottom left. If I hold down Command, it's actually going to scale up from the center. So hold down Command until you can't see any more fringe on the edge. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. Now we're going to need to animate the pull-down. Let's put a keyframe on Mask Path. And then let's say that this transition, hit plus on the keyboard, let's say that this transition is going to last one second. I'm going to jump forward 10 frames at a time to one second. Command shift, right arrow, right arrow, right arrow. And then let's pull down this mask. Now it's very important when working with masks that if you want to access the bounding box, you have to double click on the edge of the mask. You don't ever double click on the center of the mask. It's always on the edge. Select or double click on the edge of the mask to access the mask. Okay, let's see. That is actually doing exactly what we want. Okay, very good. Our next step is to worry about why this house is blue instead of red, like in the example. Well, hey, look at that. There's a red solid layer here. 
this red solid layer could probably tint our turquoise house. Now how are we going to do that though? Since we're already in modes, we can see our modes in our timeline, I could change this mask, uh, sorry, this uh, red solid layer to from normal to something like multiply. That works, doesn't it? So multiply is going to tint our house red, but it also tints our window frame and our panes red. So how are we going to exclude this rectangle here? I suggest a mask. The way that you draw masks with the tools up here is to ensure that you have a layer selected. I have red solid one selected. I'm going to go to my pen and I'm going to click the corner here, click this corner here, 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 and there, and it's going to do the exact opposite of what I want. Let's flip down our red solid layers twirly. Let's flip down masks, flip down mask one. Now, something that will help quite a bit, we could either check the inverted checkbox right there, or we could simply, instead of add, go to subtract. Either one is legitimate. I'm gonna go with subtract in this case. Let me, does that look pretty good? That looks, that looks good enough for our purposes right now. I'm going to click toggle switches and modes to get back to my switches because I want to, here, command A, U to collapse everything. Command A, please. U to collapse everything. Now, you'll notice that this little column right here, which is the uh, quality and sampling switch, they that all has backslashes, pixelated backslashes. We don't want that. We want them all to be very smooth. So with all my layers selected, Command A, I'm going to check so they're all forward slashes and are perfectly smooth. Our, it will cause the uh, images that we're using to look a lot better. Okay, so now we've got this going for us. That's awesome. We've got our transition, and then as soon as that's done, we have our red house revealed. If, we, if you remember from the example, we now need a Zorro sneaking in from behind. But the problem is, <laughs> Zorro is actually existing behind our window, but we just can't see it. How are we gonna remedy that? You got it. We're gonna cut masks into the window layer. So what we're gonna do is select window layer. We're gonna grab our pen. I'm going to zoom in on the window panes. Grab my pen tool and then select each of these panes one at a time. Boom. Okay, not exactly what we wanted. Again, it's the opposite of what we want. I'm gonna reveal my mask properties all of my mask properties by hitting MM. Just M reveals mask, but MM reveals all of the mask properties. I'm going to change its mode from add to subtract, and now we're starting to get somewhere. See, now I can go down here to Zorro, reveal position, scrub, there he is. Okay, so we need to do this, select window again, we need to do this to all of these panes with our pen tool. So what should we talk about while I'm drawing window panes, while I'm cutting out window panes? How have you guys been? How's your semester going? Really? That's surprising. All right, I'll try to hurry here. Maybe I'll do the baking show, the cooking show trick, and go and fast forward through all of this. I'm not gonna, I have to allow for that board in there. That's not gonna be transparent. Click here. Click there, click there, complete that rectangle, and the last one, three, four, five. That one's a little bit wonky shaped. Actually, I need to go in and redo that one as well. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, so if I wanted to go back to a mask, how would I select just one of the points of a mask? Well, if I'm lucky, I can just click on the one point. Yep, it worked. Uh, if you're in double click mode, if you're in bounding box mode rather, and you want to select just one point, you're going to have to double click again until it goes back to just this vector line and point mode. And you may have to click somewhere other than the edge and then click back on the edge to get the other ones to not be selected and only this point to be selected. It takes a little bit of getting used to 
and by little I mean tons. I'm going to click that one. Click that one. Okay. That's probably good. Zoom out. Option slash. Okay, now these one, two, three, four panes are not working because why? Well, they're all add mode. So I'm going to select them all and go to subtract mode, and now they're working exactly how I want them to. Okay, next step, we need to cut out Zorro. Zorro's got this super attractive creamsicle orange colored gradient background. Here, let's solo Zorro. Click the solo switch. We want to get rid of that orange to white, beautiful bar gradient. So what we're going to do is we are going to, you know how sometimes you'll double click on accident a layer and you'll get into the dreaded layer mode? That's actually what we want in this case. We want the layer mode so we can isolate him and draw his mask. And you know what? I'm going to show you something right now that I think I've talked about in class. But if you hold down the tilde key, or the approximate symbol key, whatever you want to call it, it's next to the one key at the top of your keyboard, top left, it will enlarge whatever panel your mouse is over to fill the screen and back again. So if I went over here to my project window and hit tilde, it would enlarge that. But I want the layer window to be enlarged. So I'm going to hit tilde, and then I need to grab my pen, and then I'm going to start drawing. Now, I happen to know that we only need the top half of Zorro, so I'm going to make just a real quick outline here. You guys might want to spend a little bit more time outlining Zorro, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to go very quickly here and start drawing with my pen. I'm even going to zoom in more. I'm going to hit the greater than key. Clicking and dragging makes the handles. Uh, I can come back and fix this after the fact. Okay, if I want to break these handles into independent, right now they're moving in sync. If I want to, if I want them to move independently, I can hold down Option, and it's going to break those handles. Just FYI. That's good. That's good. I'm just clicking and dragging. I'm going to get rid of that string. That string's not going to be there. Okay, here's a good example of when you might actually need to break the handles and make one independent. I'm going to hold down Option, and I'm going to drag it down like that. So when I draw this next line, it will hug the contours of Antonio Banderas's square jaw. There we go. There we go. And again, here with the sword, I want about that much curve. I'm going to hit Option, drag that upward there, so I can click there, click there, there, there. It behaves a little bit differently than Illustrator and Photoshop at times, but you'll get used to it. This is the sword's sheath holster. What do we call it? Sheath, I think. Okay. That's probably all we need. We can go across here and then right there. Look, that's great. Okay, I need to actually go back and modify this, don't I? Put that down right there and maybe fix this one a little bit. These aren't completely symmetrical, but like I said, I told you I was going to do a quick and dirty outline, and there it is. All right, hit uh, the tilde or the approximate key again to go back to this mode. Close the layer mode. We do not want it to be in layer mode anymore, the, the layer tab, I guess. Let's uh, unsolo Zorro. Okay, we're going to do something fun now. I'm going to close window. I'm going to hit U, and I'm going to go down to my Zorro layer. Okay, let's see if I can select it and move it. Okay, I can. We're going to use what's called motion sketch to get that ever so realistic sketching, uh, sorry, tiptoeing motion of Zorro as he comes on screen. Motion sketch is pretty fun to use. Just takes a little bit of getting used to. Where's my motion sketch? Motion sketch is right there. It's just a panel. If you can't see it, it's under window. Motion sketch allows you to use your mouse's movement or your trackpad's movement or whatever it is you use for an input device to actually create the movement and add position keyframes 
for the layer you're trying to motion sketch. So, and it also, it's based on the length and or duration and or starting point of your work area. So this is where I actually want Zoro to start dancing. So I'm going to hit B to set the beginning of my work area. And I don't want to take any more than, I don't know, three seconds. It's probably not going to be three seconds. I'm going to, but I can edit it afterwards. So hit N. All right, let's click Start Capture. And with our work area set, hopefully it'll just capture between the beginning and the end of our work area like it's supposed to. Let's click Start Capture. And then you'll see that my mouse becomes, my cursor becomes a crosshair. It's not actually capturing yet until I start clicking with the mouse and dragging. So let's try that right now. Clicking. <laughs> kind of kind of blew that one, but uh, I can probably work with these keyframes. So see all these position keyframes down here? There's tons of them. Let's see what Zoro did. Yep, Zoro tiptoes. And then... All right, those are totally usable keyframes, even though he's not centered in the window panes. Now, how are we going to get him to be in the window pane? Well, let's select all of our keyframes. They're already all, they already are selected. Click the word position to select all of your keyframes and ensure that your current time indicator is directly over the top of a keyframe. The way that you make sure that it, the current time indicator is directly over a keyframe is if there's a diamond here, a selected diamond, that means that you're right on top. If I keep jumping from keyframe to keyframe, it'll always be highlighted here. It just ha it, it, it doesn't matter which one, it can be over the top of any one. So with all of them selected, my current time indicator is over a keyframe, I can move Zorro and the motion path moves with me. That's kind of cool, right? So I'm gonna put that there. Okay, you know what? I don't need these keyframes over here. I'm going to manually animate that right side. And you know what? I'm going to move them just a tiny bit, select all my keyframes. I'm directly over a keyframe. And I'm going to scoot that a little bit closer, like right there. Okay, now if I scrub, he tiptoes on. You know what? I don't even need. I can probably delete all of these as well. I'm going to have him go from there and then pause for a second and then come on screen very quickly. So for these few frames here, I'm going to have him stay still. In order to have something stay in the same position, you just add another keyframe. It essentially duplicates the previous keyframe to the left. And then, I don't know, in what, three frames? He's going to zoom into frame to the middle there. And then over the course of 10, 20 frames, maybe 15 frames, jump 10 frames, command shift, right arrow, and just command right arrow, one, two, three, four, five. Let's have him slowly move across the screen like that. And then in another three frames, three or four frames, let's have him disappear. Now one thing that's going to really help with this is Motion Blur. Motion Blur Global Switch is already activated, so I'm going to check Motion Blur on the Zorro layer, the local switch, the layer-based switch. Hit N, and let's preview spacebar. <laughs> kind of fast. But you know what? Yours doesn't have to look exactly like the example. It just has to get close. He kind of looks like he's sliding a little bit. I think I'm going to modify this. I'm going to go to this keyframe, and I'm going to slide him back on the x-axis just a tiny bit. So he's just barely moving, and then he speeds away. Okay, let's go to zero, let's reset our keyframe, or uh, the beginning of our work area, rather, and let's preview the whole thing so far. Okay, so we've got horizontal wipe down. We've got Antonio Banderas sneaking onto the screen. <laughs> it's up to you whether you want him to linger longer. He looks ridiculous when he's tiptoeing, but that's okay. It's not meant to be a, a documentary. Okay, what's our next step? After he leaves the screen, 
we have another circular white, uh, another transition. This one happens to be a very soft circular transition. And let's just have it start, let's give the viewer some time to rest, maybe 10 frames after Zora goes off screen. And let's start to mask on our curtains, because that's what happens, right? Okay, so our curtains layer, we don't actually need it to appear until right now, so I'm going to hit the left bracket to move it to this point in time, three seconds in time. And we know that this is going to be a circular mask, right? So let's go up here and grab our ellipse tool. Ellipse tool. And since I know that I want it to be centered, here, let's go back to our, the reliable quote guides right here. If you hit your quote key, these guides appear and disappear. Toggle on, toggle off. And let's start drawing with our ellipse tool from the center of the screen by holding down, well, while we drag, holding down command and shift. Let's see, this is going to be our first keyframe, so I'm going to stay pretty small here. All right, now you can see that a mask one appeared on our curtains layer automatically. Let's keyframe mask path right here, even though we're going to modify it late, uh, later. Now most of our transitions are going to be one second, so let's jump 10 frames at a time, three times for a full second. Command shift, right arrow, one time, two times, three times. All right, now we need to have the curtains take up the whole screen on the second keyframe. So let's double click on the edge of the mask, grab our handle here, while holding down command and shift, we're gonna enlarge so that it covers up the whole screen. Now I know that we're gonna apply a lot of feather to this, so I'm gonna make my mask way bigger than the screen, like way out here, so that when I do go to mask feather and crank it up to 200, we're not gonna see any fringing on the edges. Okay, so the second keyframe, the mask needs to be huge. Here, let's get rid of the ma uh, guides. We don't need those anymore. Quote key. Jump back to my first mask keyframe. And even though, since it's so feathery, uh, you can actually start to see the curtains a little bit. Let's double click on the edge of this mask and let's shrink it a little bit more. Let's hold down command while we drag and shift. And let's just make it as small as we can there. All right. Oops, let's zoom out. Option shift, option slash rather, option slash. You know what, is that too much feather? You can hardly tell it's circular. <laughs> let's try taking the feather down to 150. There we go. That works a little bit better. Let's deselect all. Yep, that'll work for us. Okay, so once our curtain's in place, we need to slash a Z into the curtains. And how are we... <clears throat> and how exactly are we going to go about doing that? Well, if you guessed masks, then you are correct. We are going to use masks to simulate Zorro slashing a Z into the curtains. We're going to grab our pen well, first we're going to select curtains, and then we're going to grab our pen tool, and then we're going to draw essentially a rectangle, a wide rectangle here. There we go. Uh, it's not exactly doing anything. Uh, mask 2, let's flip down, let's... There we go. We're going to add, we're going to change it to subtract. Now we're still seeing our house. We don't need that house. We haven't needed that house ever since this transition grew up to full size. So let's go to the second keyframe of our circular mask. Let's, I guess we'll leave that open. And let's take the window, let's see, Zora.jpg window, red solid, let's see, black fade was the beginning one, right? We don't need any of those to show up right here. So I'm going to go back just one frame and option right bracket to trim those. Okay, so as soon, let's see. Oh, I know what's happening. <laughs> we can't have this thing, yeah, uh, this will not be a problem within a couple of seconds. By the way, don't let me forget to go back and add the reflections on our windows. We forgot to do the reflections. Let's do this, these slashes first, though, and we can go back and do that. 
<clears throat> okay, so at this point, let's get to... All right, we're right on top of our second keyframe of our circular transition mask. Let's lay down a mask path keyframe right here at, where are we? Four seconds, all right. And how long do you think it takes Zorro to slash the top of a Z? Probably just a small fraction of a second. Should we say like five frames, I guess? One, two, three, four, five. That's command right directional arrow key. Let's lay down another mask path. And then let's go back to that first one that we drew because what's actually gonna happen is it's just gonna grow. It's gonna grow onto the screen. So like I mentioned before, the way that you select a point, like if I clicked here, nothing would happen. Uh, I wouldn't be able to just select and move this point, I should say. So I'm gonna click in the middle of my mask and then I'm <laughs> notice I'm not double clicking, I'm just clicking once and then I'm gonna click back here. There we go. Only that point is selected. I also want this point to be selected. And I'm going to drag them both in this direction. Why that direction? Because I essentially want it to grow out like that. Slash. Slash. <clears throat> okay, that's good. And as soon as that one's finished, we're going to start on the next one. I'm going to go down here. I can go back and fix these if I so desire. Change this masks mode to subtract. There we go. I'm going to lay down a mask. Oops, let's hit MM so we can see MM so we can see all of my mask three's properties. Then a keyframe mask path. And what did we do? Did we do five frames before? I think so. Command right arrow one two three four five times. Add another mask path keyframe. Go back to the first keyframe. And we are going to, again, let's click in the middle there, click these two, shift click, and then shrink them down like that because it needs to grow in that direction. Shink, shink. Okay, don't worry, we're going to go back and fix those little slivers that you see. We need one more mask. Let's grab our pen. And I'm going to start from out here. Very realistic slashes in this fabric, I know. Let's subtract <clears throat> and lay down a mask path keyframe on mask four. One, two, three, four, five frames. Go back to the first keyframe and we're going to grab these two points, pull them to the left. So essentially, what we've got here is what looks like a slash happening. Now let's check our speed real quick. Let's, with curtain selected, hit U, uh, U again. There's all of our keyframes. And I just want to preview this part, so I'm going to hit B for the beginning of my work area. Okay, the speed is pretty good. However, I don't like those little slivers that we're seeing. So let's fix that, shall we? Let's fix these little things from being seen. We don't want them to be seen before we actually need the mask. So what we're going to do here is zoom in on our timeline by hitting plus a couple times. So we want the slash to be visible right here on this keyframe, but not on this keyframe. So here's what we're going to do with all of our masks. We're going to reveal mask opacity on all of our masks by just clicking up and clicking back down again, the mask twirlies. I'm going to lay down a mask opacity keyframe there, there, and there. Uh, it's actually going to be 0% opacity. Oops. And one frame later, as soon as the mask appears, we want it to be 100% opacity. So on one frame it's 0, on the very next frame it's 100%. There's no time for it to tween. It's just going to, okay, let me just deselect here. Can't see any slashers. And then as soon as we need them, actually, we don't want them to appear in that order, do we? We want to slide these two over here so they're invisible until the very second we need to call upon them, like Batman or Superman. There we go. 
So what the effect that that has is putting the zero opacity first. That means everything to the left of this keyframe is going to be invisible. And then on the very next frame, everything to the right is going to be fully visible. Okay, there's our slash. We're getting close to the end, people. I know this is a very long tutorial, but thanks for sticking with it. Let's collapse that by hitting U on our keyboard. All right, we now need old style Zorro to come in up uh, behind. Black and white Zorro 2. There he is. Let's see, let's go to our example movie. I believe, does he tiptoe on as well? Yes, he does. <laughs> Curses. All right, we're going to do a motion sketch again. <laughs> we're going to motion sketch old tiny Zorro on screen. As soon as the Z is completed, he's going to start coming on. So I'm going to hit left bracket. I'm going to see, I've already cut him out for you. <laughs> he's going to start out over here with him selected. I'm going to hit B to set my work area. And let's just have him do about a second and a half. Hit N to set my work area there. Uh, let's click Start Capture on the Motion Sketch panel. And then have him... You can see the little bouncy motion paths there. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's hit P on black and white Zorro so I can see my keyframes. I think it's kind of sinking down there. I don't really want that. I love how his eyes are perfectly centered in the top crossbar of the Z. All right, so we need him to quickly squat down and then pop back up again in front of the curtain. How are we going to do that? If you remember the planets exercise where the honeydew melon, no, the tangerine moon went in front of and behind the honeydew planet, we used split layer, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. We are going to, but before we split, let's have, let's take one, two, three, four frames to have him duck down out of frame like that. Okay, now we're going to split black and white zero two. Command Shift D or Edit Split Layer. That's going to give us two layers. They actually have the exact same keyframes. We won't need any of these, but uh, just FYI. Okay, and then on this new layer, let's add another position keyframe. Option P. Oops, I just eliminated the keyframe, didn't I? Let's jump forward in time about four frames. One, two, three, four. Command right arrow. And let's shift him using our Y position properties. Shift him back up. Okay, I forgot to change the stacking order, but we can remedy that. Okay, we actually need to drag him on top of the curtains. There we go. Now he's behaving like he needs to. And I actually want to add easing to these last few keyframes here. These two animation keyframe assistant easy ease or F9 and I'm gonna do it to these two as well. Easy ease. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> Very realistic. Could probably slow him down just a tiny bit at the end there. Oh, and let's also add motion blur to both of our black and white Zoros. Very good. Okay, so now that he's in front, all we need is that typography and one more transition, and we're done! Let's add a type layer that starts right here. And says, El fin. Enter to seal that transformation. I don't want center alignment, I want left alignment. I like my paragraph and my character to be... What's going on here? I'm going to leave that alone for now. I would like to have a more traditional typeface, so I'm going to choose, let's see, Baskerville Old Face? Maybe Baskerville Old Face, but without 
all this tracking. Zero percent tracking. Okay, oh, you know what? We're at half resolution. We've been at half resolution this whole time. I'm very sorry, but I'm not going to go back and make this tutorial because it's the longest one ever. Okay, make sure your resolution is at full, by the way. Elfin. Uh, that's not... What does that need? Does it need to be bigger? No, let's leave it that way. It's got those pointy Latin serifs, so let's, let's leave it that way. However, we are going to have it not start until this current time, so left bracket to move it to this point in time. Let's animate the opacity X-File style by going, flipping down the text layer twirly and going to animate opacity. Set the opacity to zero. Flip down our range selector. We already know this, so that's why I'm ripping through it. I'm going to keyframe start right here, and then maybe 10 frames later, command shift to right directional arrow key. I have it scrub up to 100%. I don't like the fade. So I'm going to click Smoothness, zero, and then our write-on effect will be complete. Elfine. Okay. All right, all we need now is our transition out. And if I remember correctly, which I rarely do, it comes up from the bottom again. All right, essentially does the opposite of what we're doing at the beginning. The beginning pulls down, the bottom comes back up, like a drawer. Alright, here's a black fade. Let's use this. Let's move it to our current time by hitting left bracket. And let's add a mask to it. If you remember, that is Command Shift N. For new, Command Shift N gives us this lavender colored mask. Let's hit MM to reveal all of our mask properties on Black Fade. Let's change the feather to 200. And let's actually turn on the visibility of the layer, first of all. There it is. Let's double click on the edge of the mask or one of the corners to get the handles. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Less than key. And I'm going to hold down Command while I enlarge that until I don't see any more red behind it. Okay, now, Mask Path keyframe. At one second later, Command Shift, right directional arrow key. Okay, that's one second. We are going to, oh, we're going to add a keyframe here and we're going to go back to this one and we're going to double click here and we're going to pull this one down. There we go. So we'll have the effect of coming back up. And that is the Masks of Sorrow. Congratulations for making it this far. See ya.